1976, I was features editor of Gay News. I just joined the paper, which was the world's leading newspaper for homosexuals. And in those days, papers for homosexuals were not highly regarded as great works of literature or indeed journalism. And very few famous people wanted to be involved in any way, particularly in uh, Britain. Britain was only fairly recently uh, had decriminalised homosexual acts for males in England and Wales and it was still we were still sort of outlaws so when we got Angela Lansbury to be interviewed for the paper that was quite a coup we're talking 1976 and she was appearing at the National Theatre playing Hamlet's mother I a few years before had been at MGM Studios in Hollywood where Angela in the 40s came as a 17 year old. She and her mother came from England during the Blitz. She starred, co-starred I must say, in a film called Gaslight for which she was nominated for an Academy Award and the following year another Academy Award nomination for the picture of Dorian Gray and from there on she became one of the best featured supporting players in Hollywood but she then in the 1960s transformed herself into a great big blazing Broadway star especially in the musical Mame. Now when I met her 1976 she was very somber. Her mother the actress Moyna McGill had recently died. They had been inseparable and she was grieving. However, we had a very, very civilised conversation. You couldn't really not have a civilised conversation with a woman whose grandfather was George Lansbury, the great socialist, and whose politics were also embellished by a bit of communism, liberalism, conservatism, etc. She was a very intelligent woman and not grand, but she had a certain, shall we say, severity about her, particularly, as I said, she was in a somber mood. One of the things we talked about was the, were the roles that she turned down, one of which was June Buckridge in The Killing of Sister George. And she explained that she wasn't ready to play such a role then in the 1960s, maybe now she would be. And she'd also turned down a role a recent role which had won an Academy Award for an actress and that role was Nurse Ratchet in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Her film career was somewhat becalmed at the time and I had no idea that in just a few years, although she'd be playing excellent supporting roles in films like Death on the Nile, where she upstaged both Maggie Smith and Betty Davis, quite a difficult thing to do, that in 1984, she would become, over the next 12 years, one of the most famous television actresses at that time, they were, in a series called Murder, She Wrote, where she played Jessica Fletcher, Jessica Fletcher, who was a novelist, a crime novelist, who, not surprisingly, was on a uh, side to solve all kinds of murders in, in a small uh, main town. And she also went over overseas and over the rest of America as well. She was a very busy lady over those 12 series. And you can still see them. And they're in probably every single language that you can think of because they were syndicated and all over the world. She was also very famous for playing one of the great villains in a film called The Manchurian Candidate, which is horribly prescient because it's about all kinds of machinations. And she famously said to her son in the film, why don't you pass the time by playing a little solitaire? And if you see the film The Manchurian Candidate, you'll know exactly what she meant by solitaire. But she's now beloved, not just for playing Jessica Fletcher and making senior citizens sexy. And boy, the things she did for those uh, beautiful sweaters she wore was nobody's business. And she was in her uh, late 50s, 60s when she played Jessica. And she really did give not only an intelligent style and poise, but a real sexy glamour to playing an older woman. But all over the world, and in one particular place, my friend Stephen Bourne's great niece, Emilia, 
is singing along to a certain song, which is, starts with the words, a tale as old as time, true as it can be. And that is Angela Lansbury as Mrs. Potts in Beauty and the Beast. So here's to you, Angela, my favorite teapot, one of the great, great icons of not just the screen, but the stage and television. Here's to you.